I was about to make some sort of joke about uh, feeling like I'm too of a mess and sweaty to be on camera right now. But then I remembered that uh, my whole job is normally to be sweaty on the side of a mountain. So we're 50% of the way there. Okay, so, as you can kind of see behind me, I have some new shelving. I spent the day clearing all of the stuff that we had in storage there, and then building the said shelving. And this is going to be our magical gear storage area, which I am so excited for. Um, Carl and I have had, we have, amassed quite a bit of gear at this point um, and for all of Tough Souls so far we have constantly been on the move or in a state of flux or living somewhere that we knew we weren't going to be living for more than six months or a year so now that we're somewhere that we're not planning on moving from <laughs> for quite a while um, we have the opportunity to organize and store and take care of our gear properly so all of our gear is in a pile just off camera and it is all going to be rehomed into this beautiful section and I thought I'd bring you along with me while I organize, assess and just generally have a bit of fun nerding out about outdoor gear. So I think the first step is to get it all in piles in front of the storage. I mean, kind of, kind of give myself some mental uh, idea of how much we have of what, and yeah, start a very rough organization. I think. Okay. I have one of those jokes. It's the, tell me you worked in an outdoor shop without telling me that you once worked in an outdoors shop. It's all in the way you tie up your straps. <laughs> I'm sure every shop has a different way of doing it and even every iteration of staff have their own way of doing it. But that was one of the ways that we would tie up the hip straps so they wouldn't be a mess and it's how I still, actually in furnace in this bag, they live like that because I never need the hip straps in this bag, it's so small. But it's how I tidy <laughs> a lot of my bags um, away. In one of those super classic moves, I got a winter weight wetsuit for Christmas, a super duper fancy one. Um, from Carl, and of course, have not been in the sea in winter since then. <laughs> so it is still beautifully brand new. <laughs> but you know, I will definitely use it. Um, we have enough winter months here for me to need a winter weight wetsuit. So this is our current hubba hubba. Um, MS Aura tent. It is um, possibly our favourite piece of gear. Our old one is here, enjoying its retirement. Um, back in 2019, the poles broke in an irreparable way, or at least our metalwork skills are not at the level to repair them. And to get new poles for that old model of tent was as expensive as getting a whole new tent and seeing as the waterproofing was quite old in that tent and like it had given us our money's worth of nights basically uh, it was absolutely phenomenal so we got a slightly newer model which is now I guess the old model um, but we love it so much it's so great um, definitely 
definitely one of our like favorite pieces of gear. Um, in moving up here, I thought I'd thrown away all of Carl's old pairs of um, Moabs, but clearly not. These are both old pairs of boots and here is a brand new pair, um, which is pretty good timing because I think he the current Moab speeds he has are pretty banged up. So, um, but yeah, literally brand new pair of boots. How bad? But now to decide what to do with all of the old pairs that, like this, these ones aren't the worst. But these ones are definitely dead. This box may have great outdoors uh, tape all over it, but it actually holds a load of my Luvna Trace gear, um, like the educational materials and stuff I use when giving Luvna Trace courses. So for me, this place is the, probably the best spot to store it for now. I'm just gonna throw it all in a box, put it in a slot, and that'll just be one tiny corner of the gear storage uh, given over to that. If you've watched a lot of Tough Souls videos, this jacket should be incredibly familiar. It's what I did all of my hiking in from 2017 to 2020. Um, I have re-waterproofed it, I've patched it, I've done so much. I've replaced the zip once, the zip has gone again, the waterproofing isn't really great anymore. So I retired this jacket this winter, hence it has bits of uh, plaster compound on it <laughs> from a couple of days up here when it was particularly cold and wet. I don't want to throw it out. I want to try and upcycle it into something, make it into something. I don't know yet, but a lot of, a lot of good memories in this jacket. Are you even an outdoors person if you don't have too many microfiber towels? Okay. I think I have made a sufficient enough mess to now call it a day and finish this tomorrow. Um, it's not looking as bad as I thought. I'm really glad that we have the amount of storage that we have. I'm just really excited to like figure out how exactly I want it to look and how exactly it will be most easily organized to then be usable. But yeah, I think that is tomorrow's job. So see you later. Whew. back for day two. Ooh, let's try on some lights maybe. Okay, so we got our storage built. Got, I think, all of the gear piled up. Let's go through some of it. I'm thinking bags in the middle as I kind of have them stacked because they're too big to fit into any of the storage and then camping stuff on the left and other stuff on the right so like water sports climbing gear I don't know we'll see how this goes see if that makes sense um, Okay, so we've got a lovely pile of sleeping bags here. Um, but between us we own five, and technically I own four. <laughs> so, I guess it wasn't the very first sleeping bag I bought, but all I remember 
is that I was in a rush and I was going car camping. So I knew that space and size wasn't an issue. And I just need something warm because it was winter. Oh yeah, I was staying in like a, a camping like hut. But I knew that, yeah, car camping. So this is just my cheap synthetic sleeping bag that kind of throw around and use for anything. Sometimes use it on the couch. If somebody's crashing on a couch or if I'm crashing on somebody else's couch, this is the one I whip out because that's what I have it for. Um, because yeah, to go actual camping, camping with it, it is rather large and one and a half kilos. So not exactly your uh, most backpacking friendly um, sleeping bag. The other synthetic bag I have is also a snug pack. It uh, has a comfort of seven. It's like a summer bag. It's their traveler. And this is what I got for the Camino. Um, so this is the bag that I brought with me for that. And it was great for, for that. And just like summer camping, like what I was looking for was the smallest sleeping bag that I could get um, that weighed the least for my first forays into the outdoors. So because it was all summer stuff, I didn't need anything warmer. Um, it weighs 850 grams, which is a lot better than the 1.4 of this guy. And um, yeah, so I got this in like 2015, maybe? 2014, 15? Anyway, I did loads with it. Um, and I still have it. And the thing about synthetic bags is it's not as important to let them air out the way it is for down sleeping bags. I probably will open them out. I'll buy some big storage bags for them like this and open them out a bit so that they can also breathe. Um, or maybe I'll just fold them, open and fold them and just leave them stacked. That might be the best option. So that, like, they've been compressed for so long, they kind of lose their, their loft, their fluffiness, which is um, the whole thing that keeps you warm. So it's been a while since I opened up this one. Yeah. Ah, uh, memories. <laughs> If you want to know how to wash and take care of your sleeping bag, we have made a video about that before and I will link it below. And this one is like bright green. Um, I've thought about upcycling it into something else um, because it doesn't get used that often, but it's also still in really good condition and it does get used from time to time so I didn't want to just upcycle something for the sake of not feeling like I'm using it every day but it still has use in its current form so it'll stick around for a little longer I think. So I guess we'll continue with my sleeping bag uh, escapades. This is a Bango, it's the Venom 200 so if I remember right, the Van Gogh Venoms, the hunt, they went up in hundreds for the number of seasons. So this was very much a summer bag at the 200. The three season bag was the 300 and the winter edition was the 400. Um, now this is a very nice light sleeping bag. And this is what I used for like the first two years of Tough Souls. Yeah. So it's, uh, the suggested range is 5 to 25 degrees, so a two season bag, um, weighed only, I think it says 700 grams. It is a very well used um, stuff sack and bag. So the actual comfort was kind of 9 degrees, which I guess is a fantastic, amazing sleeping bag. I loved it so much, um, but it was too cold. Because Carl and I would kind of start in like, March, April hiking. This was too light sleeping bag for that time of year. It's perfect once we got to like July, August, June sometimes maybe, fine. But for the first few months, both years, I froze. Um, I was wearing all of my clothes. 
in the sleeping bag, which not ideal, but also packed down super small. If you can see, packed down to a similar size that the um, snug pack, the traveler packed down to. And it's a really, really soft, comfortable sleeping bag. Like I really liked it, like feeling it now, it feels that little bit nicer to me. And um, because it's down bag, it comes with this big voluminous storage bag to keep it all fluffy and loose. And this was admittedly stored in its stuff, stuff sack for quite a while. Um, I only got to open it up recently, but it's looking a lot better now. And so because of the cold, I finally went the whole hog and upgraded to the North Face Gold Kazoo. So, does this bag feel like overkill? Yes. Do I love it anyway? Very much yes. <laughs> it has a comfort of minus one, and I don't know how much it weighs, but it certainly isn't a lot. Now, size-wise, it was a little bit bigger than both, or than the than the Van Gogh Venom 200 and the Traveler, but it wasn't nearly as big as Green Bag or as heavy. Um, me being as short as I am, sometimes I would fold the end of the bag because, like on the really cold nights, because just having all that extra space being cold um, didn't work. Or you just like pull the bag the whole way into your feet from the bottom of it and then the excess just kind of like crumples up around you and it's not too cold. I've been delighted with it. So that was the journey of my, my sleeping bags. And finally, <laughs> we get to Carl's sleeping bag, <clears throat> which is a mammoth um, synthetic bag, one degrees, apparently it's 1200 grams, the a Juggalact Compact, whatever that means. So um, it's a little bigger and slightly heavier than my sleeping bags, but Carl got this, I want to say 10 years ago. And you know when you're used to something and you've just used it for a long time, the sleeping bag has gone through a lot, many different countries, many different projects. I think he might eventually get a new bag, but this one has done everything for him. And Carl is very much of the mindset that uh, if it's not broke, you don't need to fix it. But yeah, this is his very monster. And we washed it a while ago, and it still seems fine from that. So. Yeah, I'm also just gonna zip this up and fold it up so that it can have some breathing space now that uh, we're not using it right this second today. To move on from that, I guess, um, in the same vein, we have our do thermal rest sleeping mats. We both have the exact same one. Um, Carl started off with the Neo Light, which inflates more, but crinkles way more. And he also got a re really short one. So it was like half the size of this. Really, really small, really, really light and compact. But he ended up way preferring my style of sleeping mat. So he bought the exact same one and we've both been absolutely delighted with them ever since. I don't know if you need to store this not wrapped up in this tiny little case. I don't know. Carl's one is actually in a dry bag, which is probably a great idea. Um, when we bought his, the little like stuff sack for it um, was missing. So he just put it straight in a dry bag, which has worked really, really well. And um, it's probably a slightly safer way of uh, carrying anything in Ireland. I already mentioned our amazing tent yesterday. It was our old one, the Hubba Hubba NX. The new Hubba Hubba NX. And uh, I don't really ever see us getting anything else. Like, who knows, I'm going to try other things, but they have just been amazing. We do still have the like, Neo light somewhere. I think this proves that I still have some gear stashed in some family member's house. Okay, next we have some boots. Carl's brand new pair 
I guess could pretty safely go in there. Maybe we'll just have one cubby hole each for shoes. So I can throw his old ones in and let him decide what happens to those. How are we looking? Maybe I should just throw them away straight away instead of uh, cramming a little old pairs of boots into a car. Boots that really, realistically are not going to be used again. Certainly not those ones. As for me, I currently have two pairs of boots. These are a pair of Mindel um, leather boots, which are kind of like flexible-ish. They have um, nice smiley things in them. Cedar wood, um, like dry out your boot things in them. So they're pretty flexible. They're pretty good. I think I have made a video before running through footwear that has featured all these different levels of boots. So I'll make sure to link that below as well. Um, these are my like super duper heavy mountain boots that are really for when you're like going straight through a bog up a mountainside, no trails in sight kind of a boot um, and they're fantastic for it. Um, I don't get to wear them very often but the trick with leather boots is that even if you don't get to wear them very often to do that kind of thing, you really need to keep on top of waxing them. And they actually feel pretty okay. So I'm not doing too bad. We're gonna have to have one cubby hole that's kind of more casual home camping, I guess. So this is like a double size blow mattress that works with that pump. And maybe I'll stop by. And if you've noticed anything, from all of the different years and dates and stuff that I'm saying. It's that this accumulation of gear has been eight years in the making, maybe even 10 years in the making. So we are never once to say that you have to go out and buy all the gear. This has just been us over many, many, many years um, collecting and figuring out what it is we actually like to use when we're outdoors. On top, you um, can possibly see We got some really gorgeous black diamond hiking poles a while ago. And it's tricky because neither of us have used hiking poles. So, but we know that they have loads of benefits and sure, we want you to give them a go. The tricky thing is that we haven't wanted to bring them on really, really simple hikes because it felt um, kind of pointless to like use them on something super duper easy or it just felt weird. And then whenever we go on a serious hike, we would forget them. Or if I was doing like a running race, I never wanted to bring them, I never wanted my first time to be using trekking poles during a race itself, um, because that just seemed like I would be asking for trouble. I think you twist it. See, we're gonna use these soon. We're gonna learn how to use them. It's gonna be great. Or we'll figure out that trekking poles aren't for us or are only for us in certain occasions. And that's also fine. We just need to learn when and where those, those occasions are. Um, especially as um, anybody who's followed the, us for quite a while will know that Carl um, does not have the world's best knees. So we thought this might be a way to alleviate that problem whenever it kind of comes and goes. Maybe I'll leave them on top where they're super visible and will inspire us to use them. You know what, I think jackets are just going to go live on a coat stand, that's the word. I don't think they need to be squirreled away. Maybe, we'll see. For now, I think I'll leave these out. So this is mostly kind of like camping and cooking stuff. So this is the BioLite stove. I wonder do I have any photos of us using it? Um, it's a wood-burning cooking stove that also has, um, like, uh, it produces electricity from the heat of the wood. There we go. There we go. Oh, cable and compressed uh, wood pellet for lighting. Um, let me see. So this 
is a hefty enough thing. So this is the, the container you'd be cooking in and it clicks on top of the stove kind of. And inside it, we have the re this like amazing stove system. God, I wonder can I actually remember how it all goes together. This is a trip down memory lane because this is the stove that Carl got only a few months after we started going out. And we brought it to France on a climbing trip. Um, it was pretty cool. So this is the bit that produces the energy. So that around. Yeah, so you'd light your little fire in here. Uh, there's a little um, bit off of this like bio fuel energy generator and there's a little uh, USB port to charge up your devices um, and then this guy just sits on top nicely yeah like is it practical for long distance hiking no is it still pretty cool and yeah Will we ever use it again? I hope so. We used it for that and we brought it, oh my god, we brought it to Spain on the Camino. And we used it a couple of times, but not as many times, like a few times, but not as many times as um, the weight of it. Uh, for something that weighed so much, it is something that you would hope you would use every day, but we didn't. Um, which is fine, it's all a learning curve. Our everyday stove is actually downstairs at the moment. I must bring it back up because we were using it, like we still haven't finished building our kitchen. So we were cooking on it. I'm making coffee on it mostly. Um, it's a little pocket rocket. Um, fantastic little stove. Never have too many sporks. Now this is something that um, I haven't actually used. I bought it because it seemed like a really cool idea and I wanted to make a video about campfires, which I still do want to make, um, but this just seemed like a great idea at the time. Um, let me see if I can figure out how it works again. Now, I think I would want to Google this again before I actually used it because I want to make sure that I've done these bits right. But the idea is that you would light your fire on this mesh. And while I think, in theory, that's a great idea, I don't trust this particular model that I got online somewhere for not very much money. So if I do try ever try it out, I'll make sure to film it and see how it goes. And in theory, I like the idea, but I think I prefer the leave no trace method of using like a, a dish, a metal um, tray that you raise off the ground on rocks or however. Um, I think that's a much more straightforward and tried and tested method whereas this feels cool but I don't know just how much I would trust this metal mesh. I'll give it a go sometime in the garden and see. I'll let you know. So our main stove is this quite old but amazing um, pocket rocket from MSOI. We also have Emazor um, pots. Um, this one actually is like a dual size one, so there's like a baby version as well. Um, but because it's always the two of us, we always just kind of use a bigger pot because we can just share. Um, inside we have our tiny natural bio um, soap leaves that we use for washing up, so that we're using a minimal amount of soap, but still getting everything clean. Flint. Knife, gas, um, and off 
pattern elytra in there as well. And it all stacks in nice and neatly. We normally also have cutlery in there and a like towel for kind of like kind of like a rag. Yeah, that would be most of the things in there. Um, and then that's our whole cook system. Just nice and contained. It's been great. I've like this has been our go-to since 2017 and it's worked amazing. I think Emma Sora now have a really cute like tiny pocket rockish like Chilux uh, set which I've been very tempted by. It looks really really cool and cute. Um, perfect for like mountain like big mountain days where you want to have a cup of tea in the middle. Um, we'll wait and see if I cave or not. Okay this side or that side. We'll pop it in here and if this half of the um, fancy storage ends up being too full, we'll just move it over to the other side. Okay, welcome to the second side. Okay, so I'm not going to dig through things too much because otherwise this is going to roll into day three and I'm tired enough as it is. <laughs> So, I know this is a bag, a box of um, climbing gear. Um, so, I am just going to throw my climbing shoes in and Carl's climbing shoes in. Climbing shoe. I'll find another one later. Once upon a time, Carl and I were big rock climbers. Um, still, really, really love the sport. Um, but there's not a huge amount of climbing in Roscommon and uh, this whole hiking thing is going pretty well for us as well so someday we'll get back to both but right now um, climbing is on hold we'll get there though I think this is just going to be a bit of a miscellaneous water sports box. We have some surfing gloves, we have some splash around water shoes, we have this which is off of our sup boards which are being stored downstairs in our porch. Um, yeah, this is just going to be miscellaneous box number one. Okay, so in the process of finishing, the camera died and the memory card is full and the second memory card is full. <laughs> so um, time has passed, I'm a little bit sweaty, but we got the camera working again and we have some nicely stored gear. So our multi-day packs are stuffed in between the two. We have some day bags, we have some dry bags, our climbing gear, and then up top we have wetsuits that are currently just folded in and stuffed in there. Um, they probably won't live there forever as it's probably not a great storage system for something that's going to get wet all the time. But they're dry right now, so they can live there for now. Um, we're hoping to put up a rail outside um, in a sheltered area for them to like dry off in the future, but haven't got there yet. So for now, they fit in there. I also grabbed the maps that were um, kind of most visible to me from the get-go, plopped off there put some uh, of our outdoor books and stuff up, our tech wash and our re-waterproofing material, um, like solutions are also over there in the corner. The little cacti, because even when we're traveling, they'll be fine, they'll survive there by themselves. And uh, yeah, a little light in the corner. The idea is that we will actually get a lamp, um, but yeah. Is this the final setup? I have no idea. Was this very satisfying for me to do? Yes. So, 
I think I'm happy for now. Um, I'm sure this will evolve and change and whatever, but we can slip an update of that into um, a future video. Is there any gear that you think that we are somehow missing from our um, wonderful selection of gear? Um, some that you have that you swear by. Um, yeah, let us know in the comments. And yeah, now to pick a new corner of the house to work on and make pretty and build some furniture for. But this was definitely quite a fun personal project for me. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Okay. See you in our next video. Okay. Um, yeah, to wrap up this video, the only things I have to add are that our jackets did indeed get stuffed in the corner because we have not bought a coat rack. And one of the main additions is all my yoga mats and stuff into one of the squares. But otherwise, it's been working out um, pretty well the way it is. Um, more of our gear is um, finding its way back to us. So things are slowly filling up, but I'm really glad that they didn't start off super packed because it means there's room for growth. Um, as always, I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons. They are the ones who make all of our videos and tough souls possible. So this week, I want to say a special thank you to Ruth Candon, Keith O'Brien, and Andrew Moore and to all of our amazing patrons. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon.